This video is sponsored by admirals.com where you can find answer of all your questions in simple and presentable way to grab maximum marks in your exams. Coordination chemistry is one of the most important branch of inorganic chemistry. It is based on coordination bonds between the metal atom and the attached group. So, how coordination bond is different from ionic or covalent bonds? As we know that the ionic bond is formed between two atoms of different electronegativity by transfer of one electron from electropositive to electronegative atom. Like in case of sodium chloride, as sodium is electropositive, it will give one electron to electronegative chlorine atom. Thus, sodium will have two electrons and chlorine will have eight electrons in their outermost orbital. While in covalent bonds, two atoms of similar electronegativity share one electron each to form a covalent bond. Like in case of hydrogen molecule, both atoms are hydrogen, so same electronegativity and both have one electron. So after sharing one electron from both atoms, they will have a covalent bond. But in case of coordinate bond, two electrons or a pair of electron is transferred from a group to a metal atom. In this case, it is very important that the metal atom should have empty space in its atomic orbitals to accommodate these two electrons. And the donating group must have extra pair of electrons. For example, here transition metal like iron have empty d orbitals where it can easily accommodate extra electrons and ammonia group have one extra lone pair of electrons. So ammonia can donate both electrons from the lone pair to form a coordination bond. Please note here that the extra electron pair is added to 3d orbital of metal. So these extra electrons are in addition to the octet of the 2p orbital of iron. That means now iron have more than 8 electrons in its outermost orbital. And these extra electrons or bond cannot be explained by ionic or covalent bond concept. Thus, they are also known as complexes. Many atoms and ions get linked together in this manner by coordinate bonds to form complex cations, anions or complex neutral molecules. So, we can say that compounds containing complex ions or molecules are called as coordination compounds. For example, potassium ferrocyanide K4FeCN6 and hexamine cobalt 3 chloride. So, to study more about the coordination bonds, we first need to have basic idea of the names and terminologies used in coordination chemistry. So, first is coordination compound itself. If in a complex compound, the number of ions or molecules attached to the central metal atom is beyond the number possible on the basis of electrovalent or covalent bonding, it is considered as coordination compound. You can write this definition in your exam, but it says the same thing that the number of electrons or bonds formed in a complex is beyond the number possible by ionic or covalent theory. Second is complex ion. A complex ion is charged aggregate formed when an ion, mostly of a metal, is directly linked to a group of neutral molecules or ions. For example, when ionic compound like copper sulfate dissociates, it forms copper plus 2 and SO4 minus 2 ions. These are simple ions. But when coordination compound dissociates, it also forms ions. But in this case, the coordination bond between the central metal atom copper and four ammonia ligands remain intact. So, this type of ion formed is called as complex ion. Please note that the charge on complex ion 
can be positive or negative depending upon the compound. Next comes ligand. Ligands are the molecules or ions which are coordinated to the metal atom or ion in a coordination compound. For example, in this complex, copper is central metal atom and four ammonia groups which are attached to the central metal atom by coordination bonds, they are called as ligands. Ligands can be negative, positive or neutral. Only requirement for the ligand is that they should have extra pair of electrons. So, some of the negative ligands are cyanide where nitrogen have lone pair, nitrite where both nitrogen and oxygen have lone pairs, nitrate again with nitrogen and oxygen lone pairs, hydroxide with oxygen having lone pair, fluoride as it have 7 electron and 1 extra electron due to negative charge. So, it can become a pair of electron. Similarly, chloride and bromide ions will have a pair of electron from the negative charge. Some of the positive ligands are nitrosilium with nitrogen and oxygen lone pairs and hydrazinium with nitrogen lone pair. While ammonia, water, hydroxylamine and methylamine are neutral molecules with nitrogen or oxygen having lone pairs. Ligands can be subdivided into groups depending on the number of possible points of attachment. Like if a ligand have only one pair, it can form only one bond or one point of attachment. And if it have two lone pairs, it can form two bonds or two points of attachment. So they are named accordingly. Like monodented ligand. The ligand molecule or ion which has only one donor atom or one point of attachment and can coordinate with the metal ion at only one site in a complex is called mono or unidented ligands. Some examples are ammonia, hydroxyl ion and water molecule. All these are having only one lone pair which can be donated to metal atom. So, they can have only one point of attachment to metal atom. Some of the molecules or groups are having two or more points of attachment. So, they are polydented ligands. The ligand molecule or ion which has two or more donor atoms or point of attachment and can be linked to the same metal in a complex at two or more sites is called as poly or multi-dented ligand. As you can see in the complex ion here, ethylene diamine is forming a ring structure to form two coordinate bonds with copper. When any ligand is forming ring structure in a complex, we call it as chelates and the ligand is called as chelating ligand. So that is another name for cyclic ligand. There is another very common example ethylene diamine tetraacetate or EDTA. This molecule can bind with four oxygen lone pairs and also with two nitrogen lone pairs. So it can attach at six different points and thus it is called hexadentate ligand. Also when it will bind to the metal atom it will make ring structure that is chelate. So it is called chelating agent. There are some ligands which have more than one point of attachment. But during formation of a coordinate bond only one point of attachment is used. Like in case of nitrite ion. This is having nitrogen and oxygen both with lone pair of electrons. So both side can bond with the metal atom. But in actual case when forming complex only one side nitrogen or oxygen is attached to the metal atom. This type of ligand are called ambidented ligands. Next comes coordination number. It is actually the number of coordination bonds formed during the complex formation. For example, if we take potassium ferrocyanide, so complex is the negative part and potassium is bonded with the ionic bond. 
so we will not consider potassium bonding only consider the groups inside the square bracket so inside square bracket iron is bonded to six cyanide groups making six coordinate bonds thus coordination number is 6 now try to find the coordination number of second complex here ammonia and chloride both are bonded by coordinate bonds as both are inside the square bracket so two bonds with ammonia and two bonds with chloride thus coordination number is 4 next example is tris ethylene diamine cobalt in this case inside the square bracket cobalt is attached with three ethylene diamine groups so generally you can say that the coordination number is three but please note that the ethylene diamine is bidented ligand that means one ethylene diamine can form two bonds so in total there are six coordinate bonds therefore in this case the coordination number is six here i give you some more molecules please try to find the exact coordination number and write your answer in comment box let's see who gets it right next comes nomenclature of coordination compounds so let's take one example that is k4fecn6 the rule says that the positive ion is listed first following by the negative ion like in every case for example in sodium chloride the positive part sodium is written first and then negative part that is chloride here also we first write the positive part and then negative part so positive is potassium and then the negative or complex part please note here complex part can be in positive side or in negative side then also we need to write the positive part first second rule says that within the complex ion the ligands are named first and then the metal atom also negative complex ions must end with eight so first we write the name of the ligand that is cyanide and then name of metal that is ferrate as in this complex potassium is positive and complex and is negative we can end ferrous as ferrate but in case if the complex ion is positive and other ion is negative we don't have any special ending we can directly write ferrous as per the third rule the number of ligands are indicated by prefix di tri tetra etc also if it is negative then it should end with o so as in this example six cyanide groups are there we can add a hex and cyanide group itself is a negative ligand its ending should be with o so it becomes hexacyano and lastly oxidation state of the metal is indicated in roman letters in bracket after metal so at the end we can write 2 in roman as the oxidation state of iron is plus 2 please don't get confused this number with the coordination number as in this example coordination number is 6 because 6 coordinate bonds are formed but the oxidation state of iron is plus 2 let's take one more example co nh36 cl3 here positive part is complex ion and negative part is chloride ion so let's write chloride at the last now in the complex ion start with a ligand which is amine group and the number of ligands are six so hexamine as the amine is neutral it have no special ending only in case of negative ligand it should end with o and the metal name that is cobalt here also as the complex ion is positive no special ending only in case of negative complexes ions we end with 8 and lastly we add oxidation state of cobalt that is 3 in roman letters so the name becomes hexamine cobalt 3 chloride now let's move to next example coen3 plus 3 this is only complex ion 
and charge on this ion indicates it is positive. Negative part is not shown here. So let's start with the complex ion itself. First, the ligand that is ethylene diamine, then metal, cobalt, and the oxidation state of metal that is plus 3. In this case, number of ligands is 3. So we need to add tri, but as the name of the ligand itself contains diamine, we use different system. So, when the name of the ligand includes a number, then bis, tris, tetra, kis, and the name of the group is placed inside the bracket. So, it becomes tris, ethylene, diamine, cobalt, 3. If we have a polynuclear complex, like this one where ligand ammonia and nitro groups are bonded to two cobalt atoms in this case rule says the bridge group linking the two metal centers are separated from the rest of the complex by hyphen and mu so it becomes octamine because of eight amine ligands then bridging amido and nitro groups then the metal atom dicobalt as two cobalt atoms are present then oxidation state plus three and finally negative part nitrate so the name becomes octamine mu amido mu nitro dicobalt three nitrate next rule says that geometrical isomers are named using the prefixes cis or trans or by the numbering system if the structure is complicated. For example, in this complex, as the two chloride ions are on the same side, we can put cis before dichloro. So the name becomes potassium cis dichloro dinitro platinate. It is not necessary to add cis before all the ions, like before nitro group as it is already understood that the remaining positions are occupied by the nitro groups. But if the molecule is really complicated, then instead of cis or trans, numbering system is used to indicate the position of ligands. For example, 1,6-dichloro, 2,3-dinitro, ethylene diamine, platinum 4. And lastly, if a ligand has more than one donor atom, then the point of attachment with the central metal atom is indicated. Like thiocyanate group have both sulfur and nitrogen as donor groups. And both can form coordinate bond with metal. But at a time, only one bond is formed. So, if the bond is formed with sulfur, then it is indicated as thiocyanato S and if the bond is formed from nitrogen side it is indicated as thiocyanato N while naming the complex. So now I give you some of the complex molecules and you can try to name them as per the rules discussed here. You can write your answer in comment box. I hope you like this video and it helped you to understand the concept of coordination bonds. We will meet again in the next video. Till then, goodbye.